Hey all, welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I'm your host, pharmacist Eric Christensen. Thank you so much for listening today. Uh, go check out reallifepharmacology.com for your free 31-page study guide on the top 200 drugs. Great resource if you're taking uh, finals in pharmacology or board exams or just need a little refresher. Uh, if you've been out in practice for a while and want to see what's going on in the world of pharmacology and, and uh, stay up to, to date there, uh, definitely go check out that free resource where I highlight some of the most important uh, clinical pearls that you need to know uh, from each of those drugs. All right, so let's talk about the drug of the day today, and that is primidone. Uh, brand name of this drug is mizoline, and it is a medication that I see occasionally, not incredibly often, um, but every once in a while. Uh, it is classified, technically classified, as an anticonvulsant. Uh, however, uh, in clinical practice, the most common use I see this medication used for uh, is essential tremor. Uh, mechanistically, how does this, this medication work? Uh, ultimately reduces uh, the activity of, of neurons, and it actually uh, has a similar mechanism, obviously, to uh, phenobarbital. With primidone, phenobarbital, a barbiturate, is actually the active metabolite of this drug. So as you can imagine, it's going to have a pretty similar uh, profile uh, to, to phenobarbital. And we'll talk about adverse effects and things, of course, coming up here. So uh, again, main use, uh, essential tremor. Uh, most often, I would say, I, I probably see beta blockers used first for essential tremor. And if those aren't tolerable or if they're ineffective, um, then usually the, the next go-to in, in most situations, uh, at least in, in my experience, has been uh, primidone. So one thing to look at, I, there's been a couple of cases, I think, in my career where I've actually seen this medication um being used for seizures. Um, so that is something to, to take note of. But the overwhelming majority uh, have been essential tremor. And one thing that might kind of tip you off is if you see a really uh, lower dose compared to a higher dose, uh, the lower dose is probably indicative of essential tremor um, compared to a patient taking a higher dose um, which then it could be for seizures. Might still be for essential tremor, um, but if it the higher and higher the dose goes, the the more and more likely it's it's probably for uh, seizures versus essential tremor. So uh, just to just to give you a little uh, example of that, the the dosing range typically um, for seizures is 750 to to 1500 milligrams per day in divided doses versus essential tremor. Um, you know, the range listed in, in package inserts and things, uh, 250 to 750 milligrams per day. And I can tell you for essential tremor, I, I can't remember the last person I've seen up above probably like three or 400 milligrams per day. So, uh, again, and, and you know, my patient is a little bit more elderly and things. So, you know, younger patients, you, you might see a little bit higher dosages there for essential tremor, but, um, by and large, if you, if you see a, a lower dose uh, primidone, it's probably going to be used for central tremor. But obviously, you want to take a look at that patient history and, and make sure you've, you've got that correctly. Um, the, the biggest reason, you know, that we need to be concerned about is, you know, my goal is obviously to minimize polypharmacy. And if, you know, I know that this patient's got an essential tremor and, you know, we want to try to taper down on primidone or we want to make sure they're at the minimum effective dose because we don't want side effects of course um, we really really got to be super super careful if the patient does have an underlying seizure disorder obviously because if you you know taper down and off of that too quickly you could um, potentially put them at risk for seizures and things so definitely really really important with this drug uh, to figure out that diagnosis and make sure that you know um, it's essential tremor versus seizures. All right, so let's talk about side effects a little bit. Um, with most medications that are classified as um, anticonvulsants, uh, you're going to have CNS 
depression and, and those type of adverse effects. Sedation, dizziness, confusion, uh, fatigue, potentially a GI upset, uh, ataxia. Um, the, the way I think about it is, is it's probably pretty similar to alcohol toxicity or there's a lot of symptoms that kind of overlap uh, with alcohol toxicity uh, and primidone. Um, so that's that's an important thing to, or that's an easy way to kind of remember some of the, the potential adverse effects. Um, be careful with uh, in patients with depression. It's not that it's an absolute contraindication, but uh, there has been some reports of, of an increase in, in suicidal behaviors and thoughts and things like that um, associated with primidone. So um, again, one of those things where you might want to keep keep a little extra close eye uh, on them, if you know they've they've had some issues with depression and, and potential suicidality, um, that might give you a little bit of uh, pause in, in using this medication. And if it is needed, um, we may want to uh, really, really uh, be careful there. Uh, one other thing I, I wanted to mention um, was if you have a patient that's diagnosed with tremor and they're put on primidone, uh, be sure you take a look at that medication list. Um, you know, sometimes excessive stimulants can, can cause some tremor and shakiness. Um, you know, another uh, common drug induced, uh, uh, cause of, of tremor is, is lithium. So again, there are some medications out there that can cause tremor. And I think it's really important to go through that medication list before you're considering, um, adding a, a drug like primidone and make sure it's not drug induced tremor, um, versus, uh, essential tremor. Uh, monitoring uh, parameters, uh, we can check levels, primidone levels, as well as, remember I mentioned, uh, the, one of the active metabolites is phenobarbital. So we can monitor those concentrations. Uh, when we're using lower doses for essential tremor, we're probably not going to do that. Um, you know, the one exception might be is, is if they are showing signs of toxicity, you may check a level. Um, certainly if it's being used for seizures, that might be a situation where we're going to check, uh, levels a little bit more commonly and, and make sure that we're, um, maintaining, uh, kind of steady state concentrations and, and stuff there. Uh, dietary, uh, considerations, uh, this is kind of going to blend and blur a little bit with, with drug interactions, but, um, there are some vitamin deficiencies that, that can be, uh, caused or at least worsened, um, by, uh, primidone. So vitamin D is an example. Uh, deficiency can be worsened by primidone. Um, B12 and, and folic acid deficiency can happen as well. So obviously that could lead to, you know, megaloblastic uh, anemia type situation. All right, so let's take a quick break and we will uh, wrap up with drug interactions when we come back. If you're in the market for pharmacist board certification study material, like NAPLEX, BCGP, BCPS, ambulatory care, MTM, psychiatric exam. Uh, go check out our, our growing list of resources for these exams. Uh, we've had a lot of experience, uh, six plus years now in, in creating uh, prep tools, had a lot of feedback over the years and, and have really done our best to try to improve it uh, year after year. And I do update uh, these materials on an annual basis, obviously to try to you know stay up with the guidelines and, and make sure you guys have the, the best study materials available. So again, go check out all those resources, meded101.com slash store. Uh, if you're not a pharmacist, if you're another healthcare professional, we've got plenty of other resources, um, books on Amazon, Audible books on, on audible.com. Uh, again, go check out those resources, lots of case studies, uh, things on drug interactions, drug food interactions, uh, lots of different resources, um, and real common sense, practical things uh, that you actually see in clinical practice. Uh, within those resources as well. So again, meded101.com slash store. Uh, go support uh, the sponsor at that uh, website there. Appreciate it. All right, finishing up on drug interactions. CNS depressant activity. I think that's pretty common with, with any, anti, any drug classified as an anti-seizure medication. Um, you know, opioids, benzodiazepines, uh, you know, first generation antihistamines, any drug that has sedative type properties, we're potentially going to add on to that effect. Now, primidone, phenobarbital, um, 
the act and the active metabolite phenobarbital, these can induce CYP enzymes. So there are a ton of drug interactions. Most notably is probably the CYP3A4 induction, um, apixaban, rivaroxaban, uh, aripiprazole, uh, prednisone, quetiapine, amlodipine, uh, alprazolam. All those drugs can have their concentrations reduced. Okay, so if you see primidone started in a patient, definitely. I would strongly encourage you to look up the, the drug interactions and run a drug interaction screen because there are a lot of them, and particularly uh, through CYP3A4 in, induction. Uh, there also is some CYP1A2 um, induction properties as, as well. So, you know, a drug like olanzapine concentrations could be reduced. Uh, again, really got to pay attention there and uh, make sure we're, we're checking for drug interactions if a patient's going to need uh, primidone. And then lastly, kind of alluded to it before, um, vitamin D concentrations can be lowered with primidone. So that, that might be a situation where we might want to check that occasionally, periodically, uh, and or consider supplementation uh, to make sure patients uh, have adequate amounts there if primidone is, is necessary and, and needed long term. All right, so I think that's going to wrap up the podcast for today. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, leave us a rating review on iTunes if you enjoyed this, uh, if you found a few helpful uh, clinical practice pearls. Uh, share us with friends, colleagues, students, uh, whoever uh, could benefit from a pharmacology lesson. Um, definitely don't hesitate to share it with them. Uh, with that said, you can track me down uh, at... LinkedIn, Eric Christensen, PharmD, BCPS, BCGP, uh, also mededucation101 at gmail.com. Those are probably the two best ways to, to get a hold of me. Um, and if you got comments, questions, suggestions, uh, definitely don't hesitate to, to leave me a note there. I do try to get through uh, all of all of my emails. It, it gets harder over time sometimes to, to keep up, but um, I, I do uh, try to respond to, to everybody that does send an email. So um, again, thank you all for, for listening, um, helping me grow this uh, podcast uh, bigger than I ever thought it was be, would be. Um, so I, I definitely am really, really appreciative uh, of all of you listening and, and taking the time. So thank you so much. Signing off for today. Uh, have a great rest of your day.